And last but not least, if we hesitate, history will never forgive us. We will never forgive ourselves. Thank you, Senator Thornton, for allowing us into your home this evening. Until tomorrow, when once again we'll put another distinguished personality in the glare of our Washington, D.C. spotlight, this is Mark Willis saying good evening. Mr. Cooper? I'd give my franking privileges for a year just to get on that show. That's the kind of exposure you need and you're not getting. Is that show seen even in Minnesota? Even in Minnesota, please. Then it would be good for people back home to see their congressman and hear his views on television. Though not as good as in person, of course. <laughs> oh, I don't know. This way, they'd have the opportunity of turning me off. <laughs> anyway, it's not that simple, Katie. I doubt if he even knows who I am. Well, he should know. Do you want me to tell him? <laughs> Thank you, Katie. But I'm afraid a young congressman from Minnesota has about as much chance of getting on Washington, D.C. spotlight as, uh, well as a pretty governess from Minnesota. Besides, Mark Willard is not one of my favorite people. Why? Oh, because he, he baits his guests. Baits? Puts them on the hook and makes them dangle. And last but not least, if we hesitate, History will never forgive us. We will never forgive ourselves. Thank you, Senator Thornton, for allowing us into your home this evening. Until tomorrow, when once again we'll put another distinguished personality in the glare of our Washington, D.C. spotlight, this is Mark Willis saying good evening. Mr. Cooper? I'd give my franking privileges for a year just to get on that show. That's the kind of exposure you need and you're not getting. Is that show seen even in Minnesota? Even in Minnesota, please. Then it would be good for people back home to see their congressman and hear his views on television. Though not as good as in person, of course. <laughs> oh, I don't know. This way, they'd have the opportunity of turning me off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's not that simple, Katie. I doubt if he even knows who I am. Well, he should know. Do you want me to tell him? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Katie. But I'm afraid a young congressman from Minnesota has about as much chance of getting on Washington, D.C. spotlight as, uh, well, as a pretty governess from Minnesota. Besides, Mark Willard is not one of my favorite people. Why? Oh, because he, he baits his guests. Baits? Puts them on the hook and makes them dangle. Oh, well, that is not good. Somebody will tell him off one of these days. Oh, well, I hope it is a courageous man, like you. <laughs> if I ever get on that show, I might just do that. You would? to you by New Lark Cigarettes with the exclusive Keith filter, the only filter with charcoal granules. Lark, richly rewarding, yet uncommonly smooth. Flavor, rich, rewarding flavor made a Lark smoker out of this man. But it was the back of the pack that got him to try Lark in the first place. Only in Lark's exclusive Keith filter do you find two modern outer filters plus an inner filter of charcoal granules. These granules are not only activated, but fortified a special way to filter smoke selectively. You too will find luck richly rewarding, yet uncommonly smooth. Ready? Ready. Oh, one minute. Slow pose. All right, ready. 
I don't understand it. We get every morning paper printed in Washington, and still... Yes, we all like the same one. Poor guy. What poor guy? G.I., Private Morgan. Seems he fell in love with this Burmese exchange student, and he's gone AWOL to help her, because now that her schooling is over, our government insists she return home. Hmm. Well, don't all look at me. <coughs> I'm not insisting that she return home. Well, you're part of our government, aren't you? Oh, Mother, the best thing those kids could do is give themselves up. Oh, that is not right. That poor soldier having to go O-W-A-L just to help his girl. A-W-O-L. You should do something about it, Mr. Morley. Me? Why me? Because that soldier comes from your district in Minnesota, does he not? He does? That's right. Private Clifford Morgan of Prattsville, Minnesota. Yeah, and everyone seems to be against him. Especially that what's-his-name. Did you read what he said in his column this morning? Who? That television man. The one who baits and dangles. <laughs> Mark Willard. I'm sorry, Senator, but I'm not going to retract my statement. It grieves me that you're upset, but I'm not going to retract it. Come in. Bad news, Mr. Willard. That's normal. We've just received word from the Under Secretary of State. He has to cancel out tonight. Flying off to save the world? Too bad, and I had such a nice crop of poisonous questions lined up for him. What are we going to do about a replacement? What about Glenn Morley? Glenn who? Congressman <laughs> from Minnesota. That'll get us a rating. <laughs> we just received a most interesting letter on his behalf. I quote, in part, And unlike some politicians, Mr. Morley never talks to listen to his own voice and is courageous man and would not let you dangle him on hook. <laughs> what do you think? He doesn't sound like any politician I ever met. <laughs> doesn't sound like any politician anybody ever met. He's got one heck of a press agent. And a Mrs. Chambers from Winfield sent you these. She says she hears that in Washington the winters are very cold. The most <laughs> thoughtful. Return them to her with a nice note explaining that congressmen cannot accept gifts. Hmm? Say, these might come in handy during filibusters. <laughs> Ella? Who? Just a minute, please. Mark Willard, for you. Uh, hello? Uh, Mr. Willard? I realize this is very short notice, Congressman Moy. But the Under Secretary of State had to cancel out at the last moment. Could you possibly be my guest on Washington, D.C. Spotlight this evening? Uh, this evening? Why, uh... Well, I'd be delighted, Mr. Willard. Well, of course not. Oh, I understand. Well, thank you, Mr. Willard. Congratulations. <laughs> Mother, Katie! He wants me to fill in for the Under Secretary of State. I don't get it. Now, why would Mark Willard call me out of a clear blue sky? Those are pretty big shoes to fill with just a few hours, no? Yes, Congressman? Mark Willard was just on the phone. He wants me to be his guest tonight on Washington, D.C. Spotlight. Under boss. <laughs> you see, all that was needed was for Mr. Willard to be reminded of you and... <laughs> reminded of me? Excuse me, I, I have much work to do. Katie, how was Mark Willard reminded of me? I wrote him a letter which I posted last night. You did? What did you tell him? I told him you would not dangle on bait. Good girl, Katie. Good girl, indeed. Now we better start preparing. Yes, that's right. Now, let's see. Willard will want my entire household to appear. There's Danny, Steve, Mr. Cooper, Mother, and... Well... How would you like to make your television debut tonight? Me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so shy. Oh, it's a wonderful opportunity. Uh, I will ask him questions on rural electrification and income tax and Cuba. Katie, if you ask those questions, Glenn will have to answer them. <laughs> yes, just, just smile into the camera. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Hello. Uh, does Congressman Morley live here? Yeah, come in, please. Who is calling, please? 
Private Clifford Morgan from Prattsville, Minnesota. And this is my... Oh, I mean... Oh! Oh! She knows, Clifford. You're your OWAL soldier. AWOL soldier. Uh, maybe Congressman Morley could see us? Please, we need help. He only went AWOL to help me, and now they want to send me home. We've got no one else to turn to. They're going to throw me in the guardhouse and deport Tina. We'll never see each other again. Well, you think Congressman Morley will help us? Oh, he will certainly try. Uh, please, be comfortable. I'll try to catch you off guard and make you sound like a wet behind the ears congressman. Especially after Katie's letter. You're right. Uh, now, we better make some notes. First, foreign aid. Uh, Mr. Morley, downstairs. Uh, please, Katie. I am in favor of continued foreign aid, of course. This is most important. Katie, nothing is more important than this television interview this evening. Now, I simply cannot worry about anything else until that is out of the way. You do understand? Yeah, I understand. Now, where was I? Now, you were in uh, favor of continued foreign aid, of course. Oh, yes. made much trouble for you, and I am sorry. Please forgive me. How'd you like to kiss and make up? You joke, but... You forgive too quickly. Oh, I I'm terribly sorry. Uh, Congressman Morley is busy us now, but... Oh. Come on, Tina. Well, I, I work for Congressman Morley, and I will try to help. You will? Yeah. Uh, you two wait here, and I'm going to visit the proper authorities to see if there isn't some way for you to become an American, Tina. Then we can get this soldier of yours back where he belongs. And you will see what makes this country great. What is that? You're stiff. <laughs> Holstrom, but this is a place of business. We must not show our emotions. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> uh, well, now, Miss Holstrom. <laughs> Last time I see you, I wanted to go to Congo. Oh, yes, the Congo. And you were in Overseas Corps for Human Relations. Oh, what are you doing here? Well, they felt I was um, equipped to handle complaints mm, better than um, <laughs> human relations. You're happy here. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate it. <laughs> then why do you hum? Hum? Who hum? <laughs> well, do you have a complaint? Well, not exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the Department of Complaints, and you come here without one? <laughs> well, I... Mm -hmm. I think it would be easier mm -hmm. if I spoke when you were silent. Go right ahead. I won't make a sound. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> well, le let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you do if you had a friend who was a soldier from Minnesota who married a foreign girl and he went O-W-A-L because government was going to deport her? Now, what would you do? <laughs> I'd go to the Department of Military Projects. I was. Mm -hmm. But they could not help because it involved a civilian. <laughs> then go to the Department of Civilian Projects. No, I was. But mm -hmm. they said it involved both military mm -hmm. and civilian. Mm -hmm. So I should go to the Department of Combined Projects. Well, then, what are you doing here? Department of Combined Projects said I should appeal. To whom? To you. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, mm, uh, what part of Minnesota would this young soldier be from? Uh, Plattfield. Oh, lovely town, lovely town. <laughs> There's only one man who could help him. Yeah? Mm. Your congressman. Congressman Morley. Of Minnesota. You know him? Yeah, I know him. <laughs> since your husband asked you to dance? Could it be your gray hair makes you seem older than you are? Hate that gray? Wash it away. Wash years away in minutes with Loving Care Hair Color Lotion by Clairol. Loving Care colors only the gray. Washes it away without changing your natural hair color. So easy. Used about once a month, Loving Care washes away gray and keeps it away without changing your natural hair color. Won't rub off, even in the darkest shades. Looks so fresh and natural. Makes your husband feel younger, too, just to look at you. So if you hate that gray, wash it away with Loving Care. Not a tint, better than a rinse. Hairdressers agree it's a fountain of youth for graying hair. Loving Care Hair Color Lotion by Clairol. Hey, Phyllis Cable won't reach you. Use the one attached to camera two. Excuse me, Sadie. cameras and everything. It's also not for you. Congressman Morley's being interviewed on television this evening. Have you good news for me and Clifford? I'm, I'm sorry, Tina. I was able to do nothing. Well, thanks for trying anyway. We'd better sneak out this way, Tina. Where do we sneak to, Clifford? Oh, uh, please wait. As soon as Mr. Morley's through with this interview, I'm sure he will find some way to help. Now stay out of sight. Well, what makes you think Mr. Morley will help us? I know my congressman. <laughs> Mr. Morley, there is something I feel look like I should Kitty. know. Look at him, Kitty. Just look at him. What happened? A fight. Well, I didn't start it. From the color of that eye, you didn't finish it either. Well, perhaps with makeup, the eye will not look too badly on television. There'll be no television for you tonight, young man. Gee! That's all I need for my public image. A serious-minded congressman who advocates Peaceful negotiations, introducing a, a swollen-eyed ruffian for his son. <laughs> Sorry, Stephen. Tonight, you're a spectator. Where were we? Now, if he tries to swing you into the tariff conference... Mr. Morley, I think you should let him be on television. He has been looking forward to it. I have repeatedly told him that fighting solves nothing. Let him watch it upstairs. Now... Well, if Stephen has to watch it upstairs, so shall I. That's entirely up to you. If he tries to swing me into the tariff situation... I <laughs> Ten minutes, everyone. Mr. Willard has just arrived. Everything ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, come now, Glenn. Relax. Oh, for Pete's sake, you mean this Willard fella isn't even going to brief me before we go on the air? Does the executioner get together with the condemned man before he pulls the switch? <laughs> Very nice. Yes, yeah, very nice indeed. Where does this door lead to? That's maybe where the body's buried. <laughs> well, what have we here? 
<laughs> it's all right, kids. Just relax. You know who we are? I've got a darn good hunch. Do you know who I am? You work for Congressman Morley? Now, how'd you guess? Congressman Morley must be a wonderful man. He's going to help me stay in America and marry Clifford. Good old Congressman Morley. That don't go away. Can you think of anything else that might help me down there, Miss Cooper? A Boston accent? <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to Washington, D.C. Spotlight. I'm Mark Willard, seated in the parlor of Glenn Morley. Congressman, before we begin, I'm sure our viewers would like to meet the rest of your family. Oh, certainly. My mother, Mrs. Morley. How do you do? My secretary, advisor, and strong right arm, Mr. Cooper. Good evening. And my son, Daniel, who I see has his hair combed for a change. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Don't you have another son, Mr. Morley? Uh, yes. Stephen, age 12. Unfortunately, he's indisposed. Congressman, do you enjoy the work of a congressman? Oh, very much. Tell me, uh, do you consider yourself a good congressman? Yes, I do. Why? Well, I feel that a representative is only as good as the people he represents. And I rate the people of Minnesota very highly. Yeah, that is just what I would have said. <laughs> Mr. Morley. I understand you're quite an authority on foreign aid. If by authority you mean belief, what you say is true. I do believe in foreign aid. Now, would you tell us something about your own private aid program for visiting foreigners, Mr. Morley? My private program for foreign aid? I'm afraid I don't understand. It's a nice house you have here, Mr. Morley. Uh, well, uh, thank you. Mind showing us around a bit? No, no not at all. What's that man up to? This seems to be your evening for natural mistakes. Uh, this is our breakfast room and our, our kitchen over here. What's out here? Oh. The patio. Him and I know what he's up to. This door leads out to our... May I have the pleasure of introducing your other guests, Mr. Morley? Oh, Clifford, now the whole world will know we're here. No, honey, only the North American continent. This is the young couple that some of you have been reading about over your morning coffee. The young man, uh, Private Morgan, I believe, went AWOL in defense of this young lady, whom the government now wants to deport for various reasons. Uh, correct? You said you worked for Congressman Morley. You said I worked for Congressman Morley. I would say that explanations are in order, Congressman Morley. I agree, Mr. Willard by all parties concerned. Oh, please. It was all my fault. I took it upon myself to hide them until we could do something about... They were borrowed here at your village. You to store in to you swore Perhaps you'd be good enough to translate for our television audience, Congressman. No, I don't understand Swedish, Mr. Willard. Oh. Now, let's see if you understand English. Mr. Willard, I accepted your invitation because it gave me an opportunity to discuss some political issues in which I strongly believe. Instead, you have pride into personal matters and deeply embarrassed two young people. Young lovers, Mr. Willard, caught in a desperate situation, needing help and, and, and understanding but you have preferred to ignore the plight of these youngsters and concentrate on uh, holding me up to ridicule, merely because I hold public office. Well, I refuse to be baited any longer, Mr. Willard. I refuse to dangle from your hook. And for my closing remark tonight, may I say that I think you are a disgrace to your profession. Congressman Morley. I can just imagine the field day those columnists must be having defending a colleague. Good morning. Good morning. You are angry. The trouble is all my fault. To be far more succinct than I was last night, yes. It's not all your fault. Well, of course not. 
He wouldn't even have been on television without your help. Oh, yes. I'm very grateful, Katie, for the chance you gave me to really lose my temper and possibly my career. I have never seen you more beautiful, Mr. Morley. Well, I'm delighted. Just delighted. I uh, have the morning papers. Would anybody care to hear what the Chronicle has to say? No, no. Minnesota's Congressman Morley made television history last night. He proved himself a real veteran, poised under fire, capable of losing his temper in the best American tradition when his rights were violated. The Chronicle said that. There's more. Congressman Morley again displayed the qualities which make him a young man with a big future in Washington, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, there's more of the same in the dispatch. Now oh, it'll only give you a swell head. <laughs> I believe it. Hello? Yeah, it is. Underbart! Oh, thank you so much for calling. That was about Private Morgan and Tina. The White House has received so many messages, the President himself is going to see what he can do about it. I have a hunch he'll be able to open a door or two. Katie, you're marvelous. Oh. He's also angry. <laughs> Why, you're, you're not. Yeah. I, too, am real veteran, congressman. Veteran? Yeah. Capable of loosing temper in best American tradition when rights are violated. <laughs> the farmer's daughter will be right back after this message. Flavor. Rich, rewarding flavor made a lark smoker out of this man. But it was the back of the pack that got him to try lark in the first place. Lark is unique in cigarette filtration. Only in the Keith filter do you find two modern outer filters plus an inner filter of charcoal granules. Science uses charcoal granules to purify water you drink and to purify air you breathe. Lark's granules are not only activated but fortified a special way. This selective filtration smooths the taste, but doesn't thin out the rich tobacco flavor. On the back of New Lark's pack, this man found good reason to try Lark. But it took rich, rewarding flavor to make a Lark smoker out of him. You too will find Lark richly rewarding, yet uncommonly smooth. I won't be home for dinner tonight. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mother. Bye, dear. Oh, Mr. Cooper. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, Katie. Katie? I, uh, I'm sorry about this morning, Katie. No uh harm? -huh. I'd like you to forgive me. No uh harm? -huh. After all, it's a perfectly... Normal thing Excuse to get angry. Excuse me, I have much work to do. Oh, okay. yeah. I have a late afternoon meeting downtown and uh, another meeting after dinner. So? Would you mind bringing me my portfolio about uh, six o'clock? We could have dinner together. Why cannot Mr. Cooper bring your portfolio to you? He's busy. Busy? <laughs> oh, yes, busy. I'd, uh, better get to work. Will you, Katie? I will see. <laughs> Katie, you're not going to refuse him a dinner date. <laughs> no. I am learning, Mrs. Morley. This time I shall bait. For the afternoon, let him dangle. <laughs> There's something I don't understand. And what's that? I've been reading about one of the astronauts on his trip through space. How does he get enough air to breathe? He breathes the same air over and over. That's why they use charcoal granules to purify the air so it'll be fit to breathe again. Charcoal granules to purify the air. Where have I seen that before? Oh, I know. Have you read the back of New Lark's pack? The Farmer's Daughter has been brought to you by New Lark Cigarettes with the exclusive Keith filter.
the only filter with charcoal granules. Lark, richly rewarding, yet uncommonly smooth. Katie's the farmer's daughter. You can't resist that gal. She's country style, but city design. Got a smile that's sprinkled with sunshine. Look at the farmer's daughter. She'll perk up your morale. Her brand of charm is so disarming. Crowns turn upside down. Yola debt to Sweden. She's just what we've been needing. So glad the farmer's daughter came to town. Screen Gems Production.